Staying on top of the competitive field in Magic the Gathering is no easy task. The ever-evolving meta of standard format, now two sets deep in 2020, with Theros Beyond Death and Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, requires players to stay on their toes for the latest strategies and ideas, lest they find themselves on the back foot at the next tournament. That said, there's a few decks you can build right now that'll give anyone an edge in competition. The best competitive Magic the Gathering decks of 2020, so far. Presented by eBay. Jeskai Fires. This blue, white, and red deck is near the top of the leaderboard in Standard at the moment, and with good reason. The tricolor control system is a formidable thing to get around, filled with ways to acquire your opponent's creatures and counter their spells. A lack of creatures means it's a good, if expensive, pivot if you're looking to broaden the ways you're most comfortable playing. Here are the key ingredients. The rare Agent of Treachery is a 2, 3, 5 and 2 blue rogue that allows you to take an opponent's permanent when it enters the battlefield. The Agent was introduced in the 2020 core set, and as the only creature in Jeskai variants, is an integral part of the deck in any version you want to make up. The uncommon counter spell Dovin's Veto counters a non-creature spell and can't be countered. A fairly cheap card, this is one to keep an eye on given its usefulness. There's also the rare sorcery Shatter to the Sky that destroys all monsters with power 4 or greater. And then there's Shark Typhoon, an enchantment that turns non-creature spells into tokens. The lands are where a lot of the accumulated value comes from. The rare Fabled Passage allows you to put a basic land into play untapped if you've already put several lands out. There's also Sacred Foundry, which generates red or white mana. Raugren Triome is a rare land from new set Ikoria that provides red, white, or blue mana, is slightly cheaper than its more expensive land cousins, so it's worth tracking some of those down in new boosters. Temur Reclamation Another triple color control-esque offense, this time there's two central combinations players tend to go for, blue, green, and red, or blue, white, and green. The hardest cards to acquire, if you're going for exactly what's ranking high right now, will be the four breeding pool cards, a rare green and blue land from the Dissension set. The key lands in this deck, Fabled Passage, the blue and red Steam Vents, and the Ketria Triome, producing blue, red, and green mana, will set you back roughly $7 to $10 each. There's also considerably more creatures here, at 20, and many of them can be found cheaply. Rhineborn Cutthroat, a 25 cent uncommon that had flash and gets a 1-1 counter when you cast a spell during your opponent's turn, is a fine get for the price. As is the Frilled Mystic, who also has flash and counters a spell when it enters the battlefield, though the double green, double blue mana means interest probably won't ever get too high. Mythic Rare Brazen Borrower is the selling point, with flash, flying, and an instant ability that lets you bounce non-land permanents back to an opponent's hand. These are valued at around $15 at the minute from Throne of Eldraine, so a decent investment with a reliable turnaround if you want to get them quick. Blue, white, and green make some key alterations. Agent of Treachery makes an appearance, as does another mythic rare, Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, from the Theros set. The legendary Elder Giant is a powerful ally, at 6-6 six, six for a combined cost of 1, 3, green, 3, blue, that gives you 3 life every time it attacks. This beast is high value at $44 or so, and some builds are running 4, so if you want to go all in, it will cost you a pretty penny. There is also a blue-white legendary Planeswalker, Teferi, Time Raveler, who limits your opponent to casting only during sorcery times. At $20, he's another chunk of change if you want to run four of him in your deck, but he's likely to stay relevant in the standard marketplace for some time to come. Red Deck Wins This mono red aggro is a classic standard format play that gets results if you know what you're doing and build it right. Versions of this circulate all the time, and though there isn't the biggest market for some of the cards, it being such a regular archetype, you can always find someone to trade and barter with if you're looking to shift some of your red pile. The high end right now, 
at the $100 mark or so, is using some specific rares to give it an edge. Torbran, Thane of Red Fell, the legendary dwarf, is the most expensive creature at around $8, and he adds two damage to any red attack on your opponent's life you give. Mythic Rare Robber of the Rich has reach, haste, and the ability to let you play the top card of your deck with mana as if it were any color. This could find a lot of uses in multicolored decks. Three copies of Embercleave make up the other big bucks as a flash equipment that costs less for every attacking creature you control and gives double strike and trample. $10 or less isn't much for something that could be a staple of your mountain contingent for years to come. Cards such as Phoenix of Ash, a flying creature with haste that can be given plus two, plus zero bonus for three mana as many times as you can generate it, and Legion Warboss, a legendary goblin that generates one, one tokens are inexpensive cards that bring high returns. Many of the additions, like Light Up the Stage that lets you play the top two cards from your deck until end of turn, or else they're exiled, Heraldic Banner, which gives a plus one plus zero boost to creatures you control, and the uncommon Tin Street Dodger, a one red, one one with haste that can't be blocked if you pay one more red only costs pennies, but together create an onslaught. These are cheap, effective, and some could see increased value in the future, as red aggro continues to be a reliable fallback for players of any magic forum.